Investors love the monthly dividend stocks like Main Street Capital with its 8% dividend yield. They go gaga over income ETFs like the QYLD, promising a 12% yield that puts cash in your pocket every single month. I've even shown you how to create a portfolio of dividend stocks for weekly income, and it's one of the most popular on the channel. So how did it take us 200,000 years to create a daily dividend ETF like the QQQY and the JEPY? Hey, Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hoke here with the newest ETFs putting cash in your pocket, funds promising daily income and high dividend yields, but that might not be all that they seem. Defiance ETFs launched its enhanced income funds, the QQQY and the JEPY less than a month ago, and they're already getting massive attention raising more than 100 million in assets in less than 30 days. The chat rooms are blowing up with questions, but nobody seems to know how these ETFs work. We've been big believers in the JP Morgan Equity Income ETF, the JEPI, and the Schwab Dividend Equity ETF, the SCHD, here on the channel. So when I heard about yields of 67 and 55% on these new enhanced income ETFs, I had to check it out. What I found makes me think that these new ETFs should only be used by a very select group of investors, and definitely not for everyone. I'll start by explaining the new enhanced options income ETFs, the QQQY and the JEPY, how they work, and how they use zero-day options to create double-digit dividends. I'll show you the pros and cons of the strategy, who should invest, and if you might want to avoid this 65% dividend yield. We'll start with the Defiance NASDAQ 100 Enhanced Options Income ETF, the QQQY, a fund using daily put options with zero days to expiration to produce income for investors and to clear something up first here, this isn't going to pay you daily dividends. Despite what the website says, it is a monthly dividend paying fund that generates cash on a daily basis. Now there is a lot to unpack in that, so I want to take it step by step to see how this works. First, the NASDAQ 100 is an index of the 100 largest stocks trading on the NASDAQ, mostly big tech companies, but you also see other companies like Costco and Pepsi here. The reason why so many of these income ETFs like the QQQY and the QYLD use this index in its strategy is because it trades more than a billion shares daily in this index. The options on the NASDAQ index are also very liquid, meaning that a lot of investors are buying and selling, and these funds know that they can get in and out of a position and get good prices when they need to. That enhanced options income fund, the QQQY then, is using daily put options to produce that dividend income, and in a much different way than you might be familiar with with other covered call ETFs like the QYLD. Now we talk mostly about monthly and long-term options here on the channel, but if we go here to the NASDAQ 100 ETF, the QQQ, and to its options available, we can see there are a lot more expirations available. You can buy or sell options that don't expire until June 2026, or at the other extreme here, those that expire in days or even zero days to expiration. And unlike the QYLD, the NASDAQ covered call ETF shown here, we see that it sells a call option against its NASDAQ 100 stocks each month. It sells those call options to generate that cash income it distributes as the dividend. On the other hand, the QQQY, it's going to sell put options on a daily basis to do basically the same thing. I'm writing this up on the 30th of October, and we see in the fund's holdings, it has sold put options that expire today. By the way, you can read these by taking that name in chunks. The first, NDX, is NASDAQ index, then P for puts. Then we have the expiration date and the strike price, which is 14220 on the index. But what is even more interesting here, and we'll come back to this in the pros and cons, so make sure you catch that, but the QQQY isn't even holding any of the index stocks. It holds all of its assets in short-term treasury notes and cash, so basically risk-free cash. So we see the ETF has sold put options. The investor buying those has the right to sell the index back to that ETF, the NASDAQ 100 index for 14220 And right now we see it's trading for about 14310 but when the ETF sold those options, the index was at about 14180 so those put options were in the money. So if the NASDAQ 100 index would have fallen or just stayed where it was below that 14,220 strike price on those options on that day, the buyer would have sold them back to the ETF for that price for 14,220 and the ETF may have taken a loss on that investment. Now I can already see some eyes glazing over out there, but we're getting to how this ETF works to produce that 65% dividend yield. So again, we see it holds everything in cash, earning that risk-free yield on the assets. Then each day, it's going to sell about a million dollars worth of puts against the NASDAQ 100 index that expire that same day. Because those put options are in the money or the strike price at which the buying investor can sell them back to the ETF, that price is under the market price for the NASDAQ 100. 
then the ETF gets to collect a bigger cash premium. There's a better chance that the buying investor, the person that bought those puts, is gonna make money on those puts. So they're willing to pay the ETF a bigger fee for that option. Now, at the end of the day, the ETF isn't gonna take possession of those stocks in the index, but just close out the position in cash. If the NASDAQ stays b below or falls further from that, that strike price on the option, the put buyer gets a return on their investment and the ETF might take a loss out of which it pays its 26% holdings in cash. But if the NASDAQ index close higher than that put strike price, as it looks like it was going to happen today with that index rising to 14309 here versus the, again, the strike price of 14220 then the options expire worthless. In that case, the put buying investor does nothing. The options expire worthless and the ETF keeps that million dollars it collected for selling the put options. And that's how this ETF, the QQQY, is able to pay out that huge dividend yield. But understand this is all based on just one dividend paid out so far. We see here that it has paid out a $1.10 per share dividend at the end of September. If it were able to do that every month, so about $13.20 a year on the current share price, it would actually be about a 72% dividend yield because the share price has come down since the website calculated that September payment. I wanna to get to the pros and cons and more importantly, the risks of this strategy. But first, I also wanna personally invite you to get the Weekly Bowtie, our free weekly newsletter with all the stock market news, strategies, and trends you need to know. Each week before the market opens, I'll show you what I'm watching and the stocks that could highlight the week. It's all totally free, just something I like to do for all you out there in the community, so make sure you look for that link below. So far, I've focused on the NASDAQ 100 Enhanced Options Income ETF, that QQQY, but Defiance has also launched an Enhanced Options Income ETF on the S&P 500 index as well, that JEPY. This ETF works almost identically with the NASDAQ ETF, except it's selling put options on the S&P 500 index and has paid an annualized 55% dividend yield with its September payment. So I'm not going to go into how that JEPY works because it's going to be the same. It's going to have the same pros and cons of the other ETF that we'll talk about next. What really struck me though is that Defiance seems to be trying to market off of the popular JP Morgan Premium Income ETF, the JEPI, with this fund. Like Defiance and the JEPY are hoping that investors trading those 4 million shares daily of the JEPI kind of get confused and buy some of its funds as well. Anyway though, what are the pros and cons of this ETF strategy? Are those 70 and 55% dividend yields safe? And should you buy into these ETFs for your portfolio? Uh, probably the biggest pro and perversely the con here is that despite the website's claim that the fund gives you stock exposure to the NASDAQ 100 index, it really doesn't give you exposure to those stocks. Here again, we see that it's holding all the assets in cash and treasuries along with less than 1% sold put options on the NASDAQ 100 index. So how would that be exposure to the index? Well, well, technically, yes, selling a put option is bullish exposure to the index and you benefit as that index goes up, but the way it's used here is really no exposure at all. The strike price on these puts at 14220 on that day was only a third of a percent lower than the index price when the options were sold. Okay, so that means that, and I know we're getting deep into how option pricing works here, but in selling those puts, you only profited or had that index exposure up to a third of a percent higher. Whether the index went up a third of a percent or jumped 10% for that day, it really didn't matter to you. You were going to profit the exact same, whether it's a third of a percent or 10%. Now, does the ETF and you, the investor, benefit from the index going up rather than down? Sure. If the index were to fall further or below that 14220 strike price on that day of that option, the ETF could take a loss on that day. So that's no fun. But to say it's really giving you the benefit of exposure to those stocks in the index isn't realistic either. When the options expire worthless, the fund is going to keep that premium and use that to pay the dividend yield, not necessarily to boost the strike price. Now that non-exposure to the index isn't necessarily a bad thing either. After all, the QYLD has that true exposure to the NASDAQ 100 since it owns the shares and we see what's happened to it since the index peaked in July. Because the stocks in the index and the fund have fallen, the QYLD has plunged nearly 9% in three months. But one thing that does worry me about this QQQY and the JEPY is that they have a very high likelihood of seeing that share price fall over the long term. Now, I won't say it's guaranteed because again, but think about this. The funds are investing almost exclusively in cash and treasuries, earning about 5% a year. Against this, it sells those put options every day to generate cash. 
it collected about a million dollars on this day on those options on those. But since the options were already in the money, the ETF wasn't going to keep all that cash if the index stayed at that same level. The NASDAQ had to rise for that day for the ETF to keep all the premium it collected. And if the index fell, the ETF was going to be on the hook for a loss. In fact, the way this day was set up, the ETF would lose all that million dollar premium if the NASDAQ 100 fell by just 0.4% and would start losing money from there. And looking at the NASDAQ 100 over the last month, you can see how this can become a big problem very fast. Percent plus losses have been the norm for stocks. As an example, on that day, the index fell nearly 2.5%. The ETF could have lost not just the premium cash it collected on those options, but an additional $2.8 million on that position. So it's earning very little on that cash position, just 5% annualized on the treasuries and the cash. The upside to the daily option strategy doesn't leave much outside of those dividends paid, and that's if the NASDAQ rises on a daily basis. My fear here is that if this ETF is going to try to keep up with those daily, those double digit dividend yields, it's going to have to continuously dig into its cash to pay for it. That's going to mean that the share price continuously goes nowhere but down, even if the NASDAQ rises. Now, all you out there in the nation know I'm not a fan of the QYLD because of its shortcomings as well, but with that stock exposure, at least it's been able to see the share price rise when stocks in the index do well. So I'm afraid without that index exposure, you might not even get that with these new ETFs, the QQQY and the JEPY, but there still might be some investors out there that might want to invest in these. I'll reveal who might still want to buy those ETFs next, as well as the dividend and ETFs I like better. But you know, I've got to send that special shout out to all you out there in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're still not part of that community, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. So I know half of you out there are just saying yada, 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 stop talking and just tell me if the enhanced options income ETF dividend is safe. I don't give two turds about the stock price. Will I still get that 65% dividend yield? Well, yes and no. There ain't a snowball's chance in hell that you keep collecting that 65% dividend yield over the next five years and probably much less. With that lower yield on its cash and the treasuries and the marginal return on this option strategy, it's going to be extremely difficult for the ETF to continue to pay out that dollar plus dividend every month. The good news is that these types of income funds are extremely popular with investors. Just look at that QYLD even as the share price has fallen 30% over the last five years and the dividend has been cut 25%, the fund still has more than $7 billion in assets. That means this enhanced options income ETF should still be able to use its cash to support that dividend. The payout's gonna fall, the share price may plunge, but you're still gonna be able to collect a fairly good double digit dividend yield. And that brings us to who might still invest in these ETFs and who might wanna look for other dividend funds. But if you do want those monthly cash flow funds, make sure you check out this video here, a ranking of the top 20 monthly dividend stocks from best to worst. So yes, I do believe that this enhanced options income ETF is gonna to continue to pay out those fairly high dividend yields, not even close to 65%, but they could still be able to do double digits. It's going to come at the expense of massive share price losses, but if you don't care about the share price, maybe it's something to look into. Understand here though, and this is one more con of the strategy, because of how this option strategy is set up, that dividend you receive is going to be taxed as income, not capital gains, as income. It's the same way with this QYLD and other covered call ETFs, and it catches a lot of investors off guard at tax time. If your income is low enough, that tax rate might not be too bad, but Uncle Sam is going to take a big bite of those dividends at higher income levels. Also, don't just assume that you're never going to want to sell the shares, and you don't have to worry about a falling stock price. While it's true that you can take a capital loss so if you sell that stock for less than you paid, that's, planning on that is not a good investing strategy, and few investors ever hold a stock forever. Given everything I've seen, I still prefer those other income ETFs, the JEPI and that more traditional dividend fund, the SCHD, better. There might be still a small fraction of investors that would be better off with something like this QQQY or the JEPY, but don't invest in something just because it dazzles investors with the promise of those high dividend yields. Keep up to date with all the stock market news and trends you need to see with the weekly bow tie, free with the link below. Or click on the video to the right to see that ranking of the top 20 monthly dividend stocks. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.